Good evening, viewers, and welcome to Lifelands TV. Today we bring you a heart-wrenching story that has gripped the nation. A tragic tale of a young life taken too soon, leaving a mother devastated and a community seeking justice. Let's dive into the details of this case and see how you, our viewers, can play a role in bringing justice to the family. Now, let's start at the very beginning. The Directorate of Criminal Investigations, commonly known as the DCI, has intensified its manhunt for a prime suspect in a chilling murder case. This suspect is connected to the brutal killing of Seth Nayakio, the only daughter of a Kirinyaga politician. The DCI has even released a photo of the man they believe is responsible, a 26-year-old man identified as Ken Kamathi, also known by his alias, Sultan. I remember I, the last few days, I was, I was, I was here on Saturday. Imagine the pain of a mother, Lucine Jerry, who is not just grieving the loss of her only daughter, but also fighting for justice. Ms. Njeri, a nominated member of the Kirinyaga County Assembly, made an emotional appeal to the public. She urged anyone with information about Kamathi's whereabouts to step forward and assist the police. Her words were filled with deep pain as she said, help me a great deal to pursue justice for my daughter. It pains, it hurts, it distresses. Help me heal and get closure. Let us do this together. Now, let's take you to the fateful day. Ms. Nayakio left her family home in Kamakis Estate, Kayambu County, in high spirits. She had told her mother she was heading to Thika town to visit a friend. Can you imagine a daughter leaving home with a promise to return the next day, only for her mother never to see her alive again? Ms. and Jerry shared how she had no inkling that this would be the last time she would see her beloved daughter. Sadly, Ms. Nyakio never made it back home. Her body was found in a small rundown rental house in Biafra Estate on the outskirts of Thika town. This wasn't just any random location. It was a house belonging to a friend of hers. The findings from an autopsy conducted by Dr. John Mathia and Charles Muturi were nothing short of horrifying. It was confirmed that Ms. Nyakio died from manual strangulation, with evidence showing that her nose and mouth had been forcibly covered. Foi Beure Rafiki Anyakio has called me and she has told me she has opened her house, she has met the clothes are all over and said it's dead. Viewers, you might wonder, how did things get this far? It seems that this case has faced a few hurdles. There were concerns from the family and friends about the slow pace of the investigation. As a result, the homicide department demanded that the investigative file be transferred from Thika Police Station to their office to expedite the process. This shift came after mounting political and social pressure as the public demanded answers. The plot thickens when the DCI, backed by their crime research bureau, zeroed in on the prime suspect, Ken Kimothy, AKA Sultan. Kimothy is no stranger to the authorities. He was a former student at Thika Technical Institute. His past, as it turns out, is murky. The DCI revealed that Kimathi had previously threatened to kill someone, as documented in a court case from September 25, 2024. This has raised alarm bells, with the authorities deeming him a dangerous individual who could strike again if not apprehended soon. But the story doesn't end there. The DCI also interviewed a key witness, a university student named Phoebe Mwendi, in whose house Ms. Nayakio's body was found. Ms. Mwendi reported that on the morning of October 14th, she had left Nyakio sleeping in her bed and went to town to attend to some errands. When she returned later in the afternoon, she was met with the shocking sight of her friend's lifeless body. 
The DCI isn't taking any chances with this case. They have made a public appeal, urging anyone who knows the whereabouts of the suspect to come forward. Their message is clear. The young man in the photo is the prime suspect in the murder of Ms. Niakio. After committing this heinous act, he went into hiding. If you have any information, don't hesitate to reach out. Call our toll-free hotline at 0800722203 or report to the nearest police station. Remember, you can remain anonymous. So, viewers, what can we do as a community? This is a plea not just from the police, but from a mother who has lost her only daughter. If you know anything that can help, please step forward. Imagine if this were your loved one. Wouldn't you want the same? Let's join hands to bring justice for Ms. Niakio and help her family find some peace. But the story doesn't end there. While the search for justice continues, so does the pain of a grieving family and a community demanding answers. Let's now turn to what happened after Ms. Niakio's tragic death and the efforts to bring the suspect to justice. Ms. Niakio was laid to rest on October 29th in a heartfelt ceremony attended by friends, family, and local leaders. Among the mourners was Kirin Yaga Governor Anne Waiguru, who took the opportunity to speak out on the case. Governor Waiguru urged the investigating agencies to hasten their efforts to catch those responsible for this heinous crime. In her emotional tribute, she described Ms. Niakio as a happy and loving girl who was full of life and certainly did not deserve such a cruel end. Now, here's something that really stood out during the funeral. The governor's heartfelt questions that echoed the concerns of many. She asked, How did this tragedy happen in such a crowded area? How come no one heard anything, despite the fact that the house where Niakio was murdered is surrounded by over 30 neighbours? These are the burning questions that continue to haunt everyone who knew her. As the community mourned, the authorities were already hot on the trail of the prime suspect. Thika West Sub-County Police Commander Lawrence Muchangi revealed that the police had identified Ken Kimathi as their main suspect right on the day Ms. Niakio's death was reported. According to Mr. Muchangi, the evidence against Kimathi was overwhelming from the get-go. He was last seen entering and leaving the room where Ms. Niakio's lifeless body was discovered. To make matters even more shocking, it turns out Kimathi was in a relationship with Ms. Moenda, the friend whose house became the tragic scene of this crime. But the suspect proved to be elusive. There was a near capture on the night of October 23rd. The police came close, but Kimathi slipped away, evading their grasp. This narrow escape sparked an outcry, pushing the DCI's homicide unit to take over the investigation, bringing more resources to track him down. DCI homicide head, Mr. Martin Nyuguto, gave us an update on this escalating manhunt. The suspect, now branded highly mobile, has been reportedly seen moving between Tharaka Nithi and Meru counties. Imagine the tension. Detectives are closing in, but each time they think they have him cornered, he manages to disappear. Mr. Nuguto was confident, though, assuring the public, we believe we are very close to his heels. He can run, but it's only for a short period, especially now that we've involved all those who abhor such senseless killing. Now, this is important for everyone watching. Mr. Nyuguto issued a stern warning. Anyone considering harboring this fugitive should think twice. The risks are high, and if the police catch up with him while he's being shielded, the consequences could be severe. Mostly, Mr. Nyuguto added gravely, the results are costly to live with. This serves as a clear message. Helping a criminal on the run is a dangerous game with serious repercussions. And there you have it, viewers. A tragic story of a young life cut short, a mother's heartbreaking plea, and a community rallying for justice. But the story isn't over. The suspect is still out there. Your eyes and ears could be the key to capturing him. If you have any information, no matter how small, please call the DCI's hotline at 
0072-2203 or report to your nearest police station. Let's bring justice to Ms. Nyakio's family. Thank you for staying with us on Lifelands TV. Remember, your support by liking, sharing and subscribing helps us continue to bring you important stories like this. Until next time, stay vigilant and stay safe.